What is going on? Welcome on into another video. This is probably the second most requested video I've gotten outside of my approach shots and how to control spin. If you have not seen that video, it is up on my channel. I cover wedges, I cover mid irons, I cover long irons, how to control the spin, how to approach the greens, get the ball to stop. Also, make sure you don't overspin. So definitely go check that out. Now we're going to dive into the putting. I promised you that once there was a patch update in the beads, I would make my putting tutorial. So the patch came out yesterday. I have not seen any bead issues so far. Hopefully it stays that way, but I told you and I promised. So let's do it. Let's dive right on into the video. You guys know all I ask in return is that you like and subscribe. So if you need to practice putting, and we're going to cover it all, we're going to cover short putts, mid putts, tournament greens, we're going to cover no meter, uh, meter, all of the settings, and essentially the basics as well. So just bear with me. I'm trying to make this video as short as I possibly can, but at the same time, it's going to be a lot of information. And I'll talk as slowly as I possibly can, but at the same time, uh, just just let's get on into it. So if you need to practice, and I highly recommend practicing with a lot of these putts, is you're going to want to go into the PGA coaching skills trainer and you're gonna to wanna to go through all of those putting challenges. That's where I am right here. Uh, I am actually in the uphill versus the downhill putting one. And I think this is one of the better ones to practice because you get a little bit of break, you get a little bit of side break, downhill, uphill. And I, I really think this is a really good one to, to practice in. Uh, before I want to go, I just want to cover some settings. There have been some new settings added. If you go under settings and you go under visual, you can now turn the putting meter on and off. I'm going to leave it on for this video simply so that way um, I can show you guys. But essentially, I've been playing with it off. The putting meter doesn't really change. It's about where you put the marker. That determines the, the distance for the actual putts. And then if you go over to gameplay, obviously you can tune your putting difficulty. These have these have always been there. Uh, the putting aim point, there's two different ones. There's assisted aim and then there's at cup. So assisted aim means that they put the distance for you based off of their calculations of how far you would have to die the cup in. Um, and then at cup is they just started at the cup and then you have to determine where to move it. I'm going to show you exactly how to calculate that as well. Putt read, pretty self-explanatory. It shows you the putting. Uh, and then putt grid. So you can either have it on, which is full, exactly how I'm going to do it here, so that way I can show you. No beads means, obviously, the moving lines are going to move away, but the colors are going to stay. And then off, hopefully, they update the camera and we can get a better camera, make putting a little bit more challenging. So just make sure you understand those settings. Make sure you're set up for a success for whatever works for you, obviously. It doesn't really matter. Whatever works for you, whatever you have the most fun doing. So now let's talk about the color scheme, right? So the, the four colors that you're really going to see here, you're going to see white, you're going to see blue, you're going to see purple, and you're going to see red. So those are the four that you're going to see. Uh, and it's very similar to, to 2K. Obviously, the blue is the green yellow. The blue white is the green yellow. And then obviously, uh, orange is purple, and then red is red. But you can see here, there's no bead movement. This is white. And then you can see it slowly moves to blue. And then behind the flag, you'll see that there's a purple and a red. I'm gonna use this vertical bar here just to kind of explain it to you again. This is no movement right here. This is white. And then you can see it slowly change to a lighter blue. Beads start moving. It gets a little bit of a darker blue. Beads start moving even more. The slope gets a little bit more aggressive. The blue turns to a little bit of a purple. The beads get a little bit more aggressive. The putts are moving faster. And then the purple turns all the way into a red, which is the top, the max uh, fast aggressiveness that you want to go. So that's essentially how the color scheme works. You definitely want to pay attention to that because you can see it in both directions. Um, so that's, that's pretty much that. Now let's talk about how to actually read these putts, right? So for instance, there's a thing what is called the peak of a putt. The peak of the putt is when it's going to hit the top of its most break and start turning in the opposite direction. So for instance, all of these beads here are moving right to left, correct? Now there's going to be a point here. It's usually the midway point or the point at which the middle of the fastest beads are moving. But you can see that these 
three boxes are all moving just about the same pace. Maybe not as much at the last one. So I'm going to calculate that as pretty much moving all of the same pace. So if I take this putt here, you can see that it is a level putt. So it's not going uphill too much at all, pretty me. Uh, it's, a, it's 11 feet, 10 feet. So the peak is usually about the halfway point. So if we go down to five feet, and then so it's in between these two boxes, right? So now we want to find, all right, in between these two boxes, I have five feet and I want to give it enough break. So this is light blue. So I want to just give it maybe one to two cups, right? Now there's going to, you have to determine what kind of player are you? Are you a die putter or are you a power through the break putter? Because that is going to massively difference how far I want to change my aim point. So if I am a die putter, I have to play more break. What does a die putting means? It means that you want to just hit enough power just to get it to the front of the hole. You don't want it to travel too on by. If you are a power putter, it means you are going to add additional power. And it's what I do. It's kind of what I recommend as well. And it takes break out of it because the ball is moving faster. It's not going to break as much. But first, let's do a die putt. Right? So we have our 11 feet. And we know that... The top of the peak is going to be at five feet. It's going to be just about in between here. So if we put it back to 11 feet, right, this is where, and we're going to just dive this one in. So a little overswing there, but so that is just a little bit too far. So if we try to dive it in again, there you go. So we just died in that situation. Or you can be somebody who likes to power it through. So for instance, you wanna add extra power. So before we are aiming out here, we're gonna just aim a lot less. And obviously this is a little bit more risky simply because you can hit by the hole like that. But you can see how that doesn't break as much. And especially when it comes to the shorter putts, you definitely wanna be more of a power putter because how the game works right now, it really doesn't penalize, and I hate it to be that way, and I hope they, they throw in a fix, but it really does not penalize you right now simply for hitting it too hard. In 2K23, you can hit over the hole, but in EA Sports PGA Tour right now, you can't really hit over the hole, so if you are hitting anything short, I highly recommend kind of just powering the ball through the putt, but if you didn't want to power through the putt, you just put it at the mark, Give it a little bit of a break and let it just coast on it. So now let's look at some downhill putts. We covered a little bit on the uphill putt there, but let's also read this one square to square, right? And let's also calculate because now we are down three inches. First, let's do calculations, right? So I like to consider each box roughly two inches. So in this situation, I am three inches down. So this would be a half a box, which would be one inch. And then this would be a full box, would be another two inches. So this would be three inches here. If this was a steady moving putt, which if you read it, it's actually not. But if this was a steady moving putt, then that would be the mark for it. Now let's actually read this box by box, right? So in this downhill putt situation, we have two boxes where the beads are moving pretty consistently. And you can see that it is blue all the way across. But then if you come up to this box right here, you can see that this blue is actually turning to white. And then this one right here is actually just blue at this beginning part. And then it's white all the way over across. So it is moving much faster in these two boxes than it is down here. We just have to figure out where the break is, right? So I talk about the peak being about halfway there. So 10 feet, put it at about five feet and then we go up to that break now in this situation this would be pretty much right here where i would break this now we have to ask ourselves are we die putters or are we power putters in this situation we'll be a die putter so like i said it's not moving as consistently three inches so we're just going to put it at a one box i think one box would be pretty good like i said if you wanted to be a perfect die putter it would be there but that is a lot trickier to do. And this isn't 
This is just an alternative method, and then we'll hit this putt, and then I'll show you exactly what I would normally do. So we hit that putt there, and that would be die putting. You can see it barely got over the edge. Now, if you are a little bit more risky, but at the same time, I think it's a lot easier to make these putts, you would essentially hit through a lot of these breaks. So instead of putting it all the way here, like we did, and playing the break all the way out here, you would actually pretty much keep it just about the hole. And you can see, instead of aiming all the way at the peak out here, our now peak will be somewhere around this range here. And we just play a lot less break. And it's just much, it's a much easier situation. You just have to figure out whether or not you are a die putter, or whether or not you are a power putter. I highly recommend being more of a power putter. Uh, you can hit, you do hit past the holes, but at the same time, it's just a lot easier to control. You play a lot less break. But if you really were very safe and very cautious, you definitely can be a die putter as well. Just always have to play a little bit more break than the other putts. And that one just comes up. Also, that leaves the opportunity where you're not hitting it and giving it a full chance. So now let's talk about, that's kind of the basics for uphill, downhill. Let's get on some actual tournament greens and we can actually calculate some longer putts. And we can kind of go square by square and essentially how to do this. And if you guys ever want to hop on one of my live streams, I usually can talk about this as I play my rounds. I usually go through shot by shot exactly what I'm thinking about. All right, so this is actually a really tough situation here. All right, so we are down two feet. So you have to calculate that. Don't get confused two feet with two inches. Two feet is 24 inches. So based off of those calculations, that would be 12 boxes. So if you calculate in this situation, we have to read this box by box, right? So start at the closest one and then work your way towards the hole. It is going to break very hard right here out of the gate. And it's going to be moving left because it is a purple slope. And then it's going to keep coming down here. And then you can see the beads slow down drastically. So much so that it pretty much straightens out. And then it will actually come back down to the right. You can see these beads are essentially not moving at all or slightly moving. So in order to make this putt, I need the putt to be entered from this point right here because if it comes into this area and it comes down it's going to work its way right back to the hole and also just be realistic with yourself like the make percentage of this putt is probably like 12 percent like you're not gonna you're not gonna make all of these if it goes in it goes in you just want to scare the hole but you want to set yourself up for a really good two putt so we know we need to get it in right at this point so in order to do that i got 25 feet from my ball to this point. So what would be the halfway point of that? That would be just about 12, All right? So this is just about 12, or we can count the squares. And now the fastest moving part, this is my peak. You can see here, this is the darkest color. It's also right in between the fastest moving part. So this is right where I want to aim. All right, and like we talked about, this is down 24. So if you really wanted to count it, 12 boxes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. But like I said, I don't like to be a complete die putter. I like to give it a little bit extra, take a little bit of break off of it so I don't have to. So I'm actually gonna do it about 10 boxes instead of 12. And then we're going to aim right out here to just about the second one because we just took a little bit off of it. Hit it there. Working its way down. Will it work its way back? Not completely, but it's an easy two-putt situation there. So we come back down. All right, so we just didn't play that one enough, enough high enough. And these are not going to be easy situations. Play it here. See if I don't overswing it this time. Let the green take it on down. And we're in a pretty good situation right there. And it even had a chance to go in. 
come back up. All right, so we just got the same spot. Just play a little bit more break or be a little bit more of a die putter. Let it go on down to the hole. And while we aren't making these completely, all of those are easy tap-ins and we're having no issues there. It's definitely just a tough situation because there's no like practice course for like putting where you could do like a miniature putt course in 2K23, but definitely take advantage of these skills trainers and just get used to some putting, right? Figure out whether or not you're a die putter or not. And like you can see here, this one was 12 feet, but it's down two inches. So one box would put it here if you really wanted to die it in, right? Now we're looking at it. These beads are all kind of moving a little bit consistently. So 12 feet, find the peak which would be six feet. Here's six feet, the peak right here. And then put it back to where you, you had it. And then we're dying it on in, oh. But that's essentially how I go about it. Aim at the peak, add some brake, Add some power if you want to be through your power hitting and then put it on it so i like to hit through breaks if you have any short putts i mean you could even go as aggressive as you want if you really want to take all the break out of it just know it's going to leave you some extra spots in the end um, but i hope that helps find the peak it's about halfway usually unless it's an s turning putt a double breaker then break it into little squares Start at the ball, work your way towards it, find the break, find the peak, adjust, are you a die putter or are you a power through the break? Anything inside five feet, just move it way past right now until they hopefully fix it in the future because you can't really hit over the hole uh, and it will help out a lot. I hope this putting tutorial finally helps um, and I look forward to getting some feedback. If you guys, uh, if this helps, if it doesn't help, if you guys use alternative methods, just because I use this method does not mean that I'm right, does not mean that I'm wrong, but I hope that it helps. Thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Catch you guys later.